Hey guys, Zeus here. Welcome to this Season 9 Diana Guide. After testing different builds, I feel Diana has some crazy hidden potential in one-shotting enemies and split pushing. With the recent tower changes, Diana is able to reap rewards from the tower plate gold as she deals some serious damage to towers with her third auto. Here is a cheat sheet for everything you need if you want to test this out ASAP. The rest of this video will explain in more detail. If you want to skip to a certain section, that will be listed in the description below. Here are the runes for this Diana guide. The major rune you want to take is Electrocute. It can be procced with a simple QWR combo. In lane, it can be procced with a QW and an auto, though this will be trickier against ranged champs. Dark Harvest can be an alternative. However, it's only best to use this rune if you can guarantee a late game. Diana doesn't exactly shine late game compared to other champs since you want to be picking up kills early and mid game and snowballing your lead. The first minor rune is Sudden Impact. Once Diana reaches level six, this rune will come into effect. Diana makes great use of the lethality since she gains some attack speed with her passive and relies on a third auto for an optimal combo. Eyeball Collection is probably the best as a default here since the other two runes don't provide the snowballing potential of this rune. Simply put, the more kills and ward takedowns, the more you will gain AP and snowball the game. Ravenous Hunter has recently been nerfed, however, it still seems to be a strong sustain type rune. Relentless Hunter is viable if you feel movement speed is essential for the team comp and don't need the sustain from Ravenous Hunter. Ingenious Hunter is the third option, but won't be as optimal as the previous two runes. Ultimate Hunter is close to useless since you want to hit your Q for double the R combo. Sure, you could intend to miss the Q and engage with R, hoping that the CDR from this rune helps you, but there's almost no good reason to choose a rune planning to fail. The first rune from the sorcery path is Absolute Focus. Since you will engage most fights at close to full health, this will provide a nice amount of AP. Staying at full health in lane will allow you to Q poke with a little added AP. Diana can quickly output most of her damage and CDs within the first few seconds of the fight while you are full health, utilizing this rune perfectly. Ravenous Hunter complements this rune nicely, helping you maintain above 70% health. The final rune you want to take is Gathering Storm. Even though this is one of the better late game runes, it still provides great AP at the 20 and 30 minute mark. Diana's W provides a shield based on AP, so the more AP just gives her slightly more tankiness, something we aren't directly spending gold on. This is just one of those best runes in the current patch and has been for a while. Corrupting Potion is best for most situations with Dark Seal purchase on your first back. If you're feeling very confident in a safe lane, you can start Dark Seal and Refillable, a very cost efficient start with a chance to stack AP with early takedowns. You can always back and upgrade to a Corrupting Potion if things get ugly. Spellbinder is an underused item, but it is almost perfectly made for Diana. Giving a burst of movement speed and AP, it allows Diana to engage and output a huge burst of damage. Because it is so underused, most players will not expect the burst. Sorcerer's Shoes are optimal in 90% of games. This is a great first buy if you're struggling to get that large rod for your Spellbinder. Also useful if you need to get to lane quicker, plan on roaming a lot, or just generally want a greater chance to dodge abilities in lane. Third item here is situational. If you're ahead and picking up kills, go straight for a Rebidon's Death Cap. The immense AP you gain from this item and its passive will stack with the Spellbinder's active. You can literally one-shot any champ that's not a tank at this point. A second option for the third item is Morello, a much safer build path and useful if the enemy team have a few sources of healing or lifesteal. The HP will help you too. Zonya's is an amazing playmaking item for Diana. Sometimes you just want to bait out a fight so you can combo in, deal as much damage as possible, and then hit Zonya's for that safety. This will allow your team to catch up and provide time for your abilities to come off cooldown. Remember, your W can still damage enemies while in Zonya's, so remember to proc that if you haven't already. Void Stuff is probably essential if the enemy team have started to build MR, as most do late game, but if that isn't an issue, try Lich Bane. With all that AP already built, your autos will hit like a truck, making you a late game split pushing threat to backdoor if the chance arises. Merc Treads are also viable option if the enemy team is stacking AP or CC, and Ninja Tab Eyes for an all enemy AD comp. I've added Magi's Soul Stealer if you're already ahead and want to snowball. Magi's can be bought at any time after your Spellbinder by upgrading your Dark Seal. 
For Diana's skills, you want to max Q, W, then E. Some laning phases, you may want to put two points in W for extra tankiness and damage trades. There was a time when E only provided CC, not the attack speed, so most players wouldn't even level it up until level 5 or even 7, but I would recommend getting it at level 3 now. It can always be useful if you get dived by either the enemy laner or the jungler, and you need that CC to keep them under tower longer for those extra tower shots. Diana's Q is vital for optimal combos. It provides her only source of safe farming in lane against most ranged champs, and it applies Moonfall to enemies, allowing you to use your R twice. Hitting a Q on a target allows you to perform the highest damage combos as well as using your Moonfall target as a gap closer to either finish off a low health champ who's far away or as an escape, maybe through a monster in the jungle or a minion. Going to quickly mention her W has two shields. The first smaller shield is activated instantly. Her second bigger shield is only activated once all three spheres have been procced either on minions or champion, which is very important to win trades. As for summoners, since the recent TP nerf in the last patch, which is 8.23, I would recommend Ignite in most matchups. The kill potential you have with Ignite gives you the greatest chance to snowball. The toughest part about playing Diana is the laning phase, simply because most of the matchups are against ranged champs who will constantly hit you with autos and abilities. Here are a few tips. Try to push the lane as fast as possible, using W to tank enemy abilities and your third auto for AoE clear. Most champs will struggle to counter your push and they'll quickly have to decide whether they want to sacrifice CS just to damage you. You want to keep pushing and warding danger areas until level 6, when your kill potential is really high. Using your Q in lane is essential for picking up CS that you can't reach safely and also look to poke with it. Once level 6, look to kill your enemy laner by either hitting Q and going for a full combo, making sure to at least hit your third auto. If you have managed to pick up a kill and don't risk dying, make sure to hit the tower platings. Her third auto does so much damage and if you can pick up just two platings, that's almost like getting a double kill. If there is no kill potential on your laner, look to roam bot or top, or even into the enemy jungle. Make sure you have your lane pushed and your jungler is close for backup if you do so. You can even just look to deny the enemy jungler if he's not in your vision or if he's not in your area. Take as many camps as possible. Diana's clear is fast and her shields allow you to complete camps without taking almost no damage. Split pushing is a great option once laning phase is over. Her ability to 1v1 is huge against most squishies. Even potential to 1v2, even 1v3, depending on how fed you are and how weak or squishy the enemy champs are. She can take towers extremely fast with two AP items, since her third empowered auto scales with AP. I would almost always recommend splitting when your team is behind. Forcing the enemy team to bring two to three champs to deal with you allows the rest of your team to either push for objectives and safely farm to catch up. Sometimes they'll even win fights on their own since they have the numbers advantage. A word of caution. I only noticed above the two that playing Diana was a little harder. Kills didn't come as easy Experienced players almost never allowed me to get too close for Q combos. Laning phases are also punished a lot more, so as obvious as it may sound, have a lot of Diana games under your belt if you want to try it at higher elo. So try this out and let me know how it feels. The main reason I've gone for this strat and build is because I find it extremely fun, rewarding and optimal. Very rarely do AP champs have the ability to one shot and take towers fast. If you have any questions, comment below. Feedback is welcomed since it can help me improve the quality of these guys. If you want to see a guide on a specific champ, let me know. Enjoy the build and start climbing in ranks right before the next season starts. See you guys in the next video.